All right, everyone, welcome back to Better Biobed. Today is the trash to treasure dumpster dive refurb. We're going to do it. Step one. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, guys. Step one. I've got all the metal components stripped down. This here is the hub, which contains my electronics. Super easy. Removed all the electronics. Got everything down to the base metal. And you can see this guy right here. We're going to leave the motor attached. We're going to go clean the mud out. Help me out with all this task. I've got my Dewalt right here with the brush. All right, so one of the things I do before I paint this guy, you see it's got this beauty ring that's floating around right here. The most correct thing, I could paint it with it on there, but the most correct thing is to take off each of these leaves right here, two fasteners, it's gonna pop right off, that allow me to separate the beauty ring, and then I can actually get a good inner coating. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. Nice. Okay, here are all the leaves. You see that they're quite dirty on the underside, so that's going to have to be remedied as well. All the mud dauber, you can actually see some of the hornets. That's going to get cleaned off, brushed off, cleaned, painted. It's going to be beautiful. All right, guys, using my brush right here and clean the parts off. Got to clean them off both sides really well. Make sure all that dust is gone. See, it doesn't really matter if all the rust and scaling is gone. You see right here what it looks like before. Just got to get a lot of that dust off there. Because what I'm going to be using is a paint that's texturized called Hammered. So no, that's not the color you see after you had a good night of drinking. Hammered creates a uneven surface which looks really beautiful. And items like this where you have rust and pits and stuff like that, it's gonna look beautiful with a good hammered finish. A little bit of brushing, prepping it for paint. Next up, let's paint. Hey, here we go, this is the hub of the motor. The paint itself will create that illusion right there, which makes up for all the differences in the surface texture. If you're saying like, hey, why are you applying that with that kind of surface technique? Well, that's for this exact reason is because by collecting the paint in certain areas, it's going to look beautiful. Okay, so here we go. Here's all the rest of the components. Oh, missed a piece right there. There we go. So now, let's paint these ones up here. A few moments later. Here we go, let's take a look. So you can see some of the texturing that's going on with these parts. They're all painted. And luckily it's not gonna rain or anything today so I can let them dry thoroughly. So I even got the drop tube painted. And that texture is gonna pop when it comes to all the blades and the motor. The motor's over there. So let's go ahead and let it dry and we'll put it on the table and put it back together. Next step, scrubbing up the fan blades. Here you can see, this one here is already almost all the way clean. Gotta get in there, give them a good scrubbing. They come clean quite well, it's just dirt, it's good stuff. So I'm not gonna paint these, I'm just gonna scrub them up. Okay, the fan blades and the beauty ring, the decorative ring, they're all done up. Now, I was going to paint this guy. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I'll let it uh, dry off a little bit more. And I'll think about painting it. It actually feels like a composite ceramic or something. Really odd, but uh, also pretty cool. So, all my pieces are clean, painted. Much, much, much later. All right, guys. It is late at night, and I decided to come out and check the parts, see how they're doing to make sure that they're not tacky anymore, enough to bring them in, because anybody that's spray-painted anything before in the history of mankind knows that bugs like sticking to objects, especially at night. So if I can pull them in before it like turns out to be due in the morning and stuff, I will have a much better product. And I think I do. All right, guys. So uh, this guy right here, it did get painted. So I painted it white uh, because it was a uh, faded gray before and it was meh. So now I've got the blades. They're all cleaned up. They're ready. Uh, the motor, you can see like there's a couple areas where I could have done better, but this is all going to be inside too. So um, I mainly spray painted this for corrosion resistance. 
because, you know, in high humidity environments, this is an outdoor fan. Uh, you want it to have that corrosion resistance. You can see here's the underside with the gaskets for the fan blades. Uh, that that coating came out beautifully. Look at the hammered effect that's on it. And that's that's a good thing because you can't see the pitting and stuff that happens on these metals. So you just wire brush them down. You spray them with a hammered paint. And you get a beautiful sheen to them. So this one here, you can tell I didn't pull the labels off and they bubbled up a little bit. That's okay. It really doesn't matter uh, because for the most part, that is all going to be hidden. And uh, again, for corrosion and hiss resistance is why I did it. Uh, these other parts came out absolutely fantastical. So these guys are ready. These guys are ready. Sure, I could have done some things better, but, you know, it was in the trash. So who cares? So guys, stay tuned because uh, coming up next, we're going to go ahead and assemble this bad boy. Uh, probably tomorrow after I get out of work. And... Uh, I'm going to give it one more night here with the air conditioning to, you know, um, cure a little bit harder because as soon as you start putting fasteners in, it'll chip and pull at paint and stuff if it's not completely cured. So we're going to go ahead and let all that happen. Tomorrow we're going to assemble it. And I think I found a spot for it. I think because currently I have a fan right here that comes on and it helps pull the cold air over to the other side where my dog lives. And I think I'm going to put a ceiling fan over there. That or right here actually i really would kind of like one over my workbench but i don't know if i have the space oh no i do but i don't i don't like lights and fans because they create that choppy effect but i can't really put one right here hmm maybe i'll move that light put a fan right here i don't know i'll figure it out but uh maybe i'll, I'll put a fan right here this is a big gap yeah i'll probably put it right here okay so stay tuned for tomorrow we're gonna go ahead and do that Coming up next. Three days later. All right, guys, here we are. It is now, what, day two, day three of this teardown. Um, the items are all painted. They look actually pretty good. Reasonable, really reasonable, considering they were in the trash. And uh, had I not rescued it that day, it would have got rained on that day. Plus, uh, the trash has definitely come since then. So uh, here we are, a couple days later. All the items are painted. We're going to switch over to the table view, and let's go ahead and start this. Rebuild. It's going to be good, guys. I'm very excited. I, I have figured out that I'm going to put the ceiling fan right here. I'm going to mount it right behind me. There's nothing like a nice little breeze while you're sitting there working on stuff. That's what I'm talking about with a six inch drop tube. It'll be perfectly fine for mounting to my own ceiling. So let's go ahead and get right into it. And maybe I'll include on this video a mount video where I'm going to mount it and turn it on. Let's see how it runs. Let's get to it. All right, guys, here we go. This is the table view. Uh, this is the beauty ring. The top, we got the can lid, we got some extra accessories. So I'm gonna get some of the extra stuff off to the side because we're not there yet. We're not ready to start assembling that. This right here is for the electronics. Set that off to the side. Get this guy, I got all my fasteners kind of pre-organized into some of their carriers. Set them off like this. The worst thing that you could ever do is have a tray full of fasteners on the table that you're working on they will get spilled that is a promise so i'm going to go ahead and pull those off i guess one of the first things i can do i could just put this guy on as one of the first things it just kind of pops in you see the three holes so i need to clear off this table so i can actually put down a drape and I'm going to put down a drape so that we don't get the stuff all scratched up. All right. So this guy right here attaches like so right there. So I know him. Man, that motor looks really good, even though I just painted it. Um, it looks fantastic. Okay, so this guy here goes here. Like so. And that is going to attach... So this guy is going to attach to this guy. Thread our wires up in. The wires are in pretty good condition. I don't see a broken uh, insulator, so we'll be all right with those. Okay, so I'm going to put a couple of these fasteners in so it's all lined up. Okay, so the next step is the beauty ring. So this guy right here, I'm going to put it in between the two. 
And these little lips, these little lips right here, I'm going to line them up like so. And then the long fasteners are going to go all the way through down to the bottom. There it goes. Wow, there's some sort of defect in the metal and it wasn't allowing me to take bite. As soon as I uh, pushed it down through that, it, it bit. We're good. Okay. All right. So there, that is it when it comes to the main motor housing. Jeez, I almost scratched it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and set something down so we don't scratch the rest of it. Better late than never. It doesn't really matter about this because that is going to be hidden, but I'd rather not scratch anything else if I don't have to. Okay, I always keep these extra vinyls and stuff laying around. Because you never know when you want to assemble a painted fan. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. I have not turned this guy on yet, so I do not know if it even works. Here's the black, here's the white. Okay, so here is how we're going to test it. So I have this power cord right here, which I'm going to unplug. Do not do this, guys. I highly recommend that nobody does this, please. I am doing this in a very contained environment. <laughs> I'm the only person even around. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to cram the wires into an IEC receptacle. I'm going to hold with the vise so it doesn't flip around. And one of the things that I have to be aware of is this guy here will move when it's turned on. So the motor won't spin without uh, the capacitor, okay? So that is automatically something that I've got to put into play. Which means let's connect this guy right here. Let's see brown, there we go. Excellent. We can put it on its side and it shouldn't move very far. I'll keep my hand on it. Let's see if it at least spins when I connect it, okay? So we have the wires in the IEC over here, which you can't see. All right, the wires are right here in the IEC. I'm going to just plug it in real quick and see what happens. Okay, we're good. Now remember, the chance that this fan is in off condition is pretty good. Woo, look at that. So let's change the speed. So that's the on off. That means the second one here is the speed. Right? Okay, I just switched the direction. See, it has a, a lighting kit, which are these two wires right here. And I think what I'm doing is I'm just turning on and off a, wire, a light accessory, which it doesn't even have. So this right here is the only one it needs. You can hear it changing its speed. Kind of loud. It's kind of loud. I don't think it's rubbing on anything. Could just be the bearings. But again, it's it's completely free loading too. So let's see. So right now, so that should be maximum speed right there. And it's not grounded. I'm touching it and I'm not getting zippity zapped. So I guess that's a good thing, right? Okay. So this unit here, it is functioning. Go ahead and unplug it. Remember? AC motors that are spinning still generate electricity, so do not touch the wires while it's still spinning. There we go. Okay. So we can go ahead and disconnect the wiring harness. And let's go ahead and yank those wires out of my cord. All right. So it does function, albeit maybe a little loud. Why is it so loud? I'll see if I can lubricate those bearings a little bit. Hopefully that will uh, quiet it down a little bit. Mm. 
It should have shielded bearings, to be honest. There we go. All right, next stop. Let's put the blade holders on and let's continue the build. So for this one here, we're gonna need these larger fasteners. These guys right here. Okay, notice how I'm not tightening them down. Just kind of putting them in there. So the primary casting of the arm, it has to thread through it. It's that tight of a tolerance. So that's why I can't start it with by hand. There we go. And as I add these arms, it's going to rotate on me automatically because of the weight is shifting. These are some really awkward fasteners. So that's why if you guys see them going in a little crooked and stuff, that's why they're just awkward by design. So I do believe that those are PH3 or Phillips number three fasteners. Number two will work, but you can tell, you can even hear it that they want to cam out sometimes. Part of that is because they are just horribly designed fasteners. The other part is because Phillips two is the wrong size. Okay. Let's go around just to make sure these are something that you really don't want to make sure is loose. Come on. There we go. All right. Those guys are on. It's looking good, man. Okay. So as determined, this little guy right here. It doesn't even do anything because this this light doesn't have the light kit, which includes the bulb assembly. If it did, there would be like an orb that attaches down here and that orb, this would turn on and off the light. It's all good. So next I've got this cup and let's see, we're gonna match up all three of these. Let's put these in by hand. Okay, so one of the things that was clear is that the uh, capacitor was held down with some uh, double-sided tape. So we gotta replace the tape. Okay, so I got some super sticky adhesive to put in here. Right there. And then we gotta line up these micro switches like so. So the only one that really matters is this one. Just gotta thread the ball all the way through. All right, I'm gonna get my pliers to help me hold on to this guy because it is not easy to hold on to. Oh, come on. Okay, so the plastic threads on this guy are not participating too well. And it's making it very complex. There it is. You gotta get the right angle in order for it to screw in. Come on. All right, there you go. This one here, entry thread is garbage. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the second one. Oh, look at that. When the threads aren't messed up, it's so much easier to install. How, how odd is that? And then this inner piece right here is actually a jam nut. So that's how you set the rotation of the outer sleeve is with this inner piece. Beauty. All right, so I have my, my directional switch right here and the boot. So the boot has to go on. I'll tell you what. Let's clean up that boot a little bit because that does not look good at all. There you go. Just brushed off with a rag. Looks 100% better. So that is a dust and moisture boot. That's how this device being an outdoor unit maintains its IPX rating. Whatever that may be. And all right. Two little screws. 
to get that guy started. And this guy. All right, excellent. It's looking really good. The second cam switch right here, I'm going to just tuck that up inside it's for the lights. Let's go ahead and connect the Molex connector. Okay, and the rest of these wiring harnesses will just kind of tuck down in there like so underneath the, uh, the beauty cover, which is this guy right here. I like how it's got a little moisture weep hole right there, <laughs> just in case. And let's see. Oh, yeah. There's a cutout for the switch. Got to remember that. Right, there we go. All right. Oh, don't you mar up my paint. All right. Last of the bottom side screws. Take a look at that. Looks so good. Okay. Let's go ahead and carefully flip it over. I'll place it over here on this side. And here's where we can start attaching the fan blades as soon as we're finally done. But next, I got to deal with the drop tube and the beauty ring that surrounds the drop tube. You know, all this stuff, okay? Let's go ahead and line up all the parts. We'll sit it right there. First thing first is the drop tube. Let's go ahead and thread these uh, cables through. All the way down in. And this guy is going to line up kind of like so. And there's a pin that goes through here. This guy right here actually can drop the entire light assembly if you need it to. So you just got to make sure that you're not pinching the wires. There we go. Cotter pin. And then we got two fasteners right here that hold the drop tube in. Got it. There's a jam nut on those, so technically, because this is a vibrating instrument, those, that jam nut's got to be tightened down. Like so, like so. Right. Yeah. All right. Jam nuts tight. This is all good. Put its little beauty ring on. Nice. All right. And this guy will have to go on. And it's not really seating all the way. So what I got to do is I got to pop it with the uh, with the dead blow. Make sure that that guy sits all the way down. Good. Okay. So now the accent ring is on. Uh, this guy here has got to be installed inverted. Like so. And then we're going to need to put the knob on this guy. Let's put him on like so. Yes. Remember, there's a pin that goes in there. This guy. So what we have to do, put the pin in, and then this will get held up like so. And there is a couple fasteners that are going to secure this tube, and you can see one of them right over here. And that holds it. Ta-da! All right, guys, let's go ahead and put the fan blades on. And let's see what this baby looks like. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> All right, so it goes like this. 
Beauty. So I'm just holding it centered with my hand while I put the fasteners in the hole and get it tightened down. Now there is a balancing procedure and I might have to do it because who knows how out of balance this could be. <laughs> who knows? Okay, that's one blade. Let's go ahead and let's do all the rest blades and uh, let's take a look at it. So it's just three fasteners each all the way around and uh, let's see what it looks like when they're all on. Okay, here we go. Let's get the last blade set up. Excellent. All right, here we go. It's all set. Now all we gotta do is install the yoke and ceiling and let's go ahead and fire this puppy up. It's looking pretty good. I dig it. A heck of a lot better than it did just a few days ago when it was sitting on the side of the road. Much, much, much later. Okay guys, let's do a final look around, the final project. You see the fit and finish. Yeah, I got some holes because I didn't install the other micro switch, but it didn't go to anything anyway. And at the very top, there's a beauty ring that would go up there. And that's not there because, yeah, I might reinstall this someplace else. This is really mainly for the video. Let's then take a look at that cable, how it goes into the hub. And the fan behaves beautifully. It's just not very practical in this room where it's currently installed. And that, is because I have an air conditioner right there. It's blowing straight down at me. Why would you want to move that air? <laughs> you want that air to be right here on you. And this guy here, not only that, but it, it is hanging kind of low. You see, uh, with me being six foot tall, it's probably about seven foot off the ground. Yeah, it's a little intimidating. All right, everyone. This is the moment of truth. The fan is installed. I don't know what speed it's on, so I might have to run over and adjust it really quickly if it starts going ballistic. But uh, everything is square, everything's ready to go. Here's the cord. Let's plug it in, let's see how it goes. That's it. It's on, you can tell it's on a low speed. And that is on downdraft. Let's turn it up. Right here is high speed. Ooh, I can feel it blowing that, that warm air down. Jeez. There's a lot of warm air up there by the ceiling. I'm gonna stand over here so that I can yank it, yank the power cord if anything's going wrong. I mean, yeah, it's working. It's blowing a lot of hot air down at me, which I don't think that's really what I want, but I guess the proof of concept's there. It works. And it's it's actually silent. Now that I have the fan blades on it, it's it's quiet. Before, it was not so quiet. <sighs> Feels kind of good, but it's blowing a lot of warm air down at me. Maybe it's helping convect the air in this room. So, speed selector's working, fan's working, and it's actually pretty. It's a really pretty fan. I'm glad that this one was salvaged because, you know, there's treasure everywhere and a lot of people just mistake that, you know? Uh, they just throw stuff away for no little to no reason whatsoever and all it takes is a little bit of skills and I had somebody write me from Finland that says that they can't partake in this project because as a community, they do uh, a lot of recycling. Good for them. Good for them, man. I would love to see a little bit more of it here in the United States with us, but uh, culturally, <laughs> it's just not it. We are consumer-based culture and we throw stuff away, and that's sad, it really is. So anyway, guys, that's my uh, outdoor ceiling fan, and seems to be functioning pretty good. Thanks for watching, guys.